In March of 2022, a brand new One Piece card game was announced and it is currently being played in Japan with plans of an English release happening later this year. What's going on y'all? My name is Steven, I'm your true champion and in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to play the brand new One Piece card game. In this video, I plan on teaching you the basic rules as well as the overall flow of the game. I will do my absolute best to give you all the pertinent information you need so you can hit the waters running and start your grand line journey off right. If y'all are excited for this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and comment down below what are you most excited for from the One Piece card game. I for one love the battle system in this game with how intricate it is both at the beginning of a battle and the end of a battle. With that being said, we have a lot of rules to go over and not a lot of time. Let's get started. In One Piece, the goal of each player is to delete your opponent's leader of life, and then when they're all out, deliver one final finishing blow to win the game. You do this by using your own leader and their crew of character cards to constantly attack the opposing leader. How do we establish this crew of characters and swashbucklers that we use to destroy our opponent's defenses? We use Dawn. Dawn cards are the main resource we use to play the game, and much like mana from Magic, Dawn cards are placed in a cost area on the game board and must be turned sideways or rested in order to pay for the costs of cards. Unlike Magic the Gathering, however, Dawn cards are guaranteed each and every turn during a specific phase of the game. On your turn, if you wish to play a card, you pay the cost in the upper left-hand corner by resting or turning sideways the appropriate number of Dawn from the cost area. For example, let's say I have four Dawn and I want to play a chopper from my hand, which has a play cost of three. I will simply rest the required amount of Dawn from the cost area and then place my chopper in the character area. Sometimes cards have other types of costs as well besides play costs, and the most confusing are definitely Dawn X and Dawn minus X effects. Dawn X effects are effects that can be unlocked if the required amount of Dawn is under Underneath the card. Let's go back to our chopper example. He has a Dawn X1 effect, which if I want to be able to use, I need to first place an active Dawn from my cost area underneath him. From there, as always, understanding the effect is as simple as just reading the card. Dawn minus X effects are activated when you return the necessary amount of Dawn to the bottom of the Dawn deck. For example, the promo Kaido has an activate main Dawn minus two effect that gives him the banish keyword for the turn. If I wish to use this effect to gain the banish keyword, I need to first take two Dawn cards from my board and place them back in my Dawn deck. To put it all simply, the more Dawn you have, the more you can do during your turn. The game of One Piece is played with a 50 card main deck, a 10 card Dawn deck, and a leader card, which is what everything is built around. All cards in your main deck must have at least one color in common with your leader, and you can only have a maximum of four copies of any uniquely numbered card. Alongside that, your main deck is made up of character cards, event cards, and stage cards. Character cards are your creatures or your units that you will use to attack and defend your board state. These cards all have a play cost in the upper left hand corner which denotes how much Dawn you need to rest in order to play the card. In the top right hand corner you can see how much power an individual character has. And in the bottom center of the card you can see the name as well as the color of the card. Event cards are sort of like one use cards that you can activate during the main phase of your turn by paying their Dawn cost and once their effects resolve they are placed in the trash. Similar to them, stage cards are also cards that you can play during your main phase, but instead of going away, they stay in the stage area and they have reusable effects that can be used each turn. As of right now, you can only have one stage card in play at any one time. Every single card in your main deck has the potential to have what's called a trigger effect. These are effects that can be activated if they are in your life when you have taken damage with your leader. These effects cannot be activated from your hand. They can only be used when they are revealed as life damage. If you wish to activate a trigger effect, you simply reveal the checked card to your opponent when you take life damage. Otherwise, you just put the card into your hand. Each game of One Piece begins with both players shuffling their main deck and placing their Dawn deck and leader card in their respective areas. 
Once you have decided who is going first via rock, paper, scissors, you then draw your opening hand of five cards. In One Piece, if your opening hand is something that you are not happy with, you can choose to mulligan or redraw the same number of cards by taking your initial hand, placing it back in the deck, shuffling, and then drawing a new hand of five cards. You can only redraw your opening hand once each game. After you have your opening hands, you then place the top X cards from your deck face down in the life area. X is denoted in the bottom right hand corner of your leader. This is what tells you how much life you have at the beginning of each game. Once you have your opening hand and your life has been placed, it is time to begin. There are five phases in one piece. The refresh phase, the draw phase, the dawn phase, the main phase, and the end phase. In One Piece, resting a character is equivalent to suspending or tapping it in other card games, and this happens when you attack or block with that card. After resting it, that card will remain in that state until the refresh phase of your next turn. During the refresh phase, all cards are put into the active or upright position before any other phases of play can continue. During this phase, any Dawn cards assigned will go back to the cost area in the active position. Each turn after the first, you will draw one card from the top of your deck. There is currently no hand limit in one piece, but if your deck runs out of cards, you'll lose the game. This is called decking out. Once the draw phase has concluded, you move to the Dawn phase, and this is where you activate two of your Dawn and place them in the cost area each turn. To activate a Dawn, you simply turn the top card of your Dawn deck face up and place it in the cost area to be used later. The player who is going first only gets one Dawn on their first turn instead of two. The main phase is, as the name suggests, where the bulk of your actions are going to take place. During this phase, you can do any of the following as you like in any order. You can play cards from your hand, you can assign active Dawn to characters or leaders you control, and you can attack your opponent's rested characters or their leader card. You play characters directly onto the character area if you are able to pay their cost by resting the required amount of Dawn from your cost area. Characters cannot attack the turn they are played, and each player can only have a maximum of five characters in play at any one time. If you wish to play a sixth character, you must move an existing character you control to the trash first. Once you have played some cards and have some leftover Dawn to use, you can do what's called assigning Dawn. This is where you take a Dawn that is active from your cost area and place it underneath one of your cards. Doing this will apply any effects or buffs to that card that the Dawn is underneath. Currently, the only effects available are power plus 1000 during your turn, so assigning Dawn can be a very helpful way to make your crew more powerful before they attack. Once my opponent has no life left, one of my favorite plays is to take all the Dawn that I have, place it underneath my leader, and do one giant unstoppable swing to win the game. Very fun. Both your leader and character cards are able to attack your opponent's leader regardless of its position, but you can only attack your opponent's characters if they are rested. You can attack as many times as you like during your main phase, with each attack happening one at a time. When you declare an attack, a battle will take place, and during battle there are three sub-steps that occur. The block step, the counter step, and the damage step. The block step is where you can redirect any attacks that are meant for one character or leader to a blocker that you have in play who has the blocker ability. You do this by resting the blocker in your character area and making it the new target of the attack. Note the character card must be active in order to block. You can only block one card at a time, you cannot double block, and once blocks have either been declared or skipped, you enter what's called the counter step. The counter step, or as I like to call it, the defense step, is where the defending player has the ability to increase the battle power of their crew by using cards in their hand. Some cards have counter effects, either in the form of stats on the left side of the card, or actual effects that can be played during this step of the game. If you wish to use a counter, you simply place it in the trash during the counter step. You could use as many or as few cards as you like, during the counter step. In order to calculate counter power, you simply add together the total amount of counters used, then apply it to the defending card's power. In this example, Luffy has 5,000 base power, and I am using 3,000 worth of counter power, so at the end of the counter step, Luffy has 8 thousand power in total. One more time, the counter step is only for the person who is being attacked, not for the person who's attacking. If you wish to make your character more powerful before they attack, I recommend using Dawn. 
The damage step is the final step of battle where the attacker and defender's powers are compared. If the attacker's power is less than the defender, the attacker loses the battle and nothing happens. If the attacker's power is greater than or equal to the defender's power, the attacker wins, and one of two things will happen. If a character card was attacked, it'll be KO'd and placed in the trash. If the leader was attacked, the defender looks at the top card of their life deck and adds it to their hand. This is what taking life damage looks like, and again, any trigger effects will happen here and nowhere else. A lot of strategy in One Piece comes down to mastering battle, as it's the easiest way to lose out on cards, either in play or in hand. So definitely make sure you're not countering too much or blocking too much. Sometimes taking a free life card and adding it to your hand can be a good thing. Once you have done all that you wanted to do during the main phase, you simply go into the end phase and pass the turn back to your opponent. In order to win the game and claim the One Piece for yourself, you must clear your opponent of life and deliver one final gum gum rocket to finish them off. If you want to play the One Piece card game, there is a tutorial app available in the App and Google Play stores where you can use the official starter decks and go over all the rules we went through today. Definitely be sure to also check out the official One Piece website down below in the description for the complete English rulebook as well as a very helpful Q&A. Links to everything I just said down below. And yeah, with all that being said, I've been your true champion, Steven. That's it for One Piece. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Peace.